Greetings and welcome to Azure and the Command Line, Options, Tips, and Tricks. My name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I will be your guide for this 15-minute session. This is shorter than the regular conference sessions because this is intended to be shown in the Expo Theater, and uh, the duration should be between 15 and 20 minutes. So let's get started. So today we're actually going to cover uh, the command line. We're going to cover everything to do with commands and uh, command line interfaces with Microsoft and Azure. Uh, so we'll start with the command line. Uh, we're going to cover Windows subsystem for Linux as well, which is Linux implementation on Windows. Uh, we're going to cover terminals. So the new terminal that has been out for a little while now, but it has some new features I'd like to share with you. And I think they're pretty cool. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Cloud Shell. The Cloud Shell is an implementation of Linux uh, running on the cloud. So when you actually invoke Cloud Shell, you're running it on the cloud in a container, as a matter of fact, uh, on Azure. And nothing is installed on your local machine. And we'll wrap up with a few tips and tricks for using the command line with VS Code and connecting remotely to a virtual machine as well. So let's start out with just something really, really simple. I have a directory here. Uh, this is in File Explorer in Windows. And um, you know, one of the things that people like to do from here is uh, you know, open up a window, uh, command window, either PowerShell or uh, command, uh, and use this as the base directory. So I could go here and I can say, copy addresses, text, and that's actually going to copy this. And then when I create a window, I can paste it in. But there's something else I could do that's actually even easier. And for those of you who don't know about this, this is definitely worth just the price of admission, this one tip. I can just type CMD here. Oops, actually, let me try that again because I had a CMD folder. <laughs> and once I do CMD, it actually opens a command window, a command prompt in uh, the console and um, ready and ready to go in the actual directory that I'm in. So in this directory, I have three batch files. So what if I want to edit some of these batch files? Well, we can do that with Visual Studio Code by just typing code. And it's actually going to fire up a version of Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, Visual Studio Code is actually, if you look up here, open in the uh, local directory that we have. Here's the three batch files that we're looking at over there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you can do exactly the same thing with PowerShell, just by typing P-O-W-E-R-S-H-E-L-L, -L. PowerShell actually fires up PowerShell for you. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and even better, let's say you want to do something with uh, some shell scripts. Here's some shell scripts here. Why not WSL? That opens up Windows Subsystem for Linux. And as you can see, it's opened up the correct directory. So we can actually play around with that. So I can actually see what's in here too. Uh, so a couple of cool things you can do, uh, hopefully useful for uh, what you're looking for from the command line. So if you're in a file explorer, uh, you can type PowerShell, uh, CMD, or uh, also um, uh, WSL. And also, you can open up a directory. From a directory, you can open up a code and manipulate and edit things, too. So uh, elaborating a little bit on WSL, what exactly is WSL? Uh, well, it's called Windows Subsystem for Linux. And it is a Linux implementation, an Ubuntu implementation, as a matter of fact, uh, running on top of Windows. And we have a translation layer in between. Um, that basically copies uh, environment variables, if you want it, uh, shares binaries, and also um, does things like remaps paths. So if you notice in the different command windows, this path is very different from the path in the command window in PowerShell. Uh, it actually remaps and uh, translates all those for you as you're working. So you could theoretically create a batch file and have a shell script be called from that batch file uh, as long as the environment variables work and you can share some binaries. So it's kind of cool stuff. So that Linux kernel is specially tuned uh, and it's fully managed by Microsoft and it's open source. I'm going to give some uh, repos at the end here and you can see 
uh, this source actually at kernel.org, and we also have a repo of our WSL implementation on GitHub. A little bit about the Windows console. That's what I was just showing you there, the DOS prompt. It's now 30 years old. It's battle tested. It's fast. It's small. It's efficient. Uh, it is a Win30 application, oh, sorry, Win30, Win32 application with virtually no dependencies. Uh, however, there are a lot of applications and a lot of functionality inside of Windows that depend very much on the Windows console and the APIs and the underlying infrastructure that's built in there. Um, this console has been overhauled very carefully to make sure we avoid any of those, uh, avoid damaging any of those dependencies that I mentioned. That uh, there have been literally thousands of lines of code replaced with modern C++ uh, standard template library, which in the C++ world is a way to actually handle algorithms and standard ways of managing code uh, in C++, and also something called the Windows Implementation Library. So those are upgraded, they're overhauled constantly, but people are looking for more. And we had a challenge actually implementing WSL, the console, PowerShell, which are each their own family and their own uh, have their own specific needs. We had our challenges actually implementing them. And when I say we, I mean the engineers. I didn't have anything to do with this. This is actually their clever work, uh, not mine. But um, I'm using the Royal We, why not? The Windows Terminal itself that we've actually created, uh, now it sits on top of the console, it sits on top of PowerShell, and it sits on top of WSL and any other command line interface that you might want to add. Um, in fact, when you load the terminal for the first time, it goes out and it finds all compatible consoles. And those can be, if it's not compatible, it can be extended and added to the family that will run uh, underneath the terminal as well. Uh, it has cool things like customization. You can do all kinds of things with themes, background gifts, and stuff like that. Uh, and you have connectivity to local and remote shells. And I'm going to show you the Azure Cloud Shell in a second, which actually works with this as well. And it has beautiful text. If you're into that, I know a lot of people in the command line world love certain fonts and certain text formats. Uh, and just for pure functionality, it also has uh, full Unicode and UTF-8 text support. It manages uh, emojis and programming ligatures as well. It's all available via the Amazon, I'm uh, sorry, via the, Am <laughs> via the Microsoft Store. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Uh, so it's via, via the Microsoft Store. I'm just going to leave that in there in this recording. We're all friends here. So um, this... Uh, <laughs> This is available through the Microsoft Store, and what that means is uh, once you install it, you can set it up. Actually, it's automatically set up for automatic updates and things like that. In fact, I just had an update last week, and I'm going to show you some of those cool features of that today. All right, so let's check out that terminal. Let's go over here just a moment. This is my terminal. Uh, by default, I have PowerShell, and I have a whole bunch of custom profiles that I've created. And I'm going to explain what these are in a little bit. But everything is controlled from PowerShell through this settings command. When you open the settings command, uh, well, it's not a command, it actually opened JSON for you. So there's a JSON file, which basically is a massive file. If you look over here on the right, you can see the kind of scale we're looking at. And the first thing you have is a bunch of uh, uh, key keyboard shortcuts, uh, and those are all customizable. But getting down here to the themes, this is actually my PowerShell theme. And I've actually broken the GIF because there is a background GIF in there, but I just want to show you this really quick. And it's instant, by the way. When you create a change, when you actually produce a change in, in the JSON file, it is instantly picked up here. I'm constantly impressed by how this works. Um, let me show you a couple of other things you can do. So here's a standard command window. All right, and uh, uh, here's a command window that I created specifically for Ignite. This one defaults to a certain directory. The font's a little bigger because I'm going to use this for um, presentations. And also, uh, we have a specific animated GIF, so I can look quickly and know which one this is. But look at this, too. If I hit the keyboard, I can actually make this text extremely tiny. So that font is just the default, as you can see. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in the size of the fonts you can do. 
All right. The next thing I did. Um, oh, one thing I want to mention. So I, I did say that it picked up automatically things. When you install the terminal, it will pick up compatible versions of command line interfaces that you have on your machine. It picked up PowerShell for me, command. Uh, and then I created the command for Ignite by cutting and pasting. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, also, we have the Azure Cloud Shell. I talked about the Azure Cloud Shell. The Azure Cloud Shell is a way, this is actually not running on my local machine. It's in my terminal, but behind the scenes, it's actually running on the cloud. Uh, it runs in this thing called Azure Container Instance. If you care to look into it, it's Azure ACI. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a Docker container, and it has a whole bunch of functionality built into it. When you add a command line interface to your local machine, you have to install things like the Azure CLI and things like that. But as you can see here, there's a little instruction, type AZ to install, to, to run the Azure CLI. The latest version of the CLI is pre-made here, and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Let's say you have Terraform. You wanna run some Terraform, or you wanna run Bash, or you wanna run Docker, or Kubernetes via Kube Control. All of those command line interfaces and more, there's more every day, are actually built into the command into the cloud shell. So that's kind of nice. You don't actually have to load these. You can just run your code, run your YAML code, run your shell scripts, uh, run your Azure CLI files. Uh, by the way, Azure CLI, a little bit of a trivia, .az CLI file, if you edit it and you have an extension that handles that type of file, it gives you type ahead and all kinds of other things. So. Uh, I see a lot of people saving these as, as saving uh, files for Azure CLI as markdown, text, batch files, shell scripts. You can actually do .az CLI and you get a lot more functionality. Okay, a little bit of trivia there. Um, next up, I had Ubuntu 16.04 and Ubuntu 18.04 preloaded on my machine. Uh, and then what I did is I went in and I created a whole bunch of customized um, templates. So here's the fireplace. <laughs> this consists of a customized profile and a customized theme. Uh, the theme manages the color, the profile manages the fact that it actually starts up uh, as a fireplace. And I'm gonna get into how you actually do that in a second. Uh, here's my Ubuntu 16.04 for Ignite. That's kind of cool. Uh, I, once again, I've made a bigger text. I've defaulted to uh, a directory that I'm gonna use for my presentations and a background GIF. Uh, I also have, um, there's a Star Wars one, uh, <laughs> which I won't get into now. It's a Telnet client, basically. How would you like to have a Telnet client built into this? It actually works. So you can actually just, because it's an Ubuntu, WSL, uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux is an Ubuntu Linux implementation that supports Telnet. So now from this terminal, you can have a Telnet client that actually goes in and does cool stuff. Uh, and that's it. And then I can actually uh, create another item here, which is uh, just Ubuntu 1804, vanilla, boring, uh, but I can do lots of cool things with this, like resize things uh, and a few other things too. Okay, so let's get into the JSON file for a second so I can show you how this works. So I showed you the keyboard commands. Uh, these are the different formats. Um, now, each time you copy, what I did is just copied and pasted these. I had to change the GUID slightly. And uh, you have to be a little bit careful with that, but I won't go into the details. It will tell you if it's wrong. Um, oh, and the other thing that's handy about this, if you're editing these, um, there you go. It's written in registry format. This is in a file called markdown.md. Okay, so uh, it actually tells you everything, for example, uh, that you need for, uh, it gives you information on whether things are needed or not. Ah, uh, let's see. So the Azure Cloud Shell, I mentioned before, it's got a custom theme and a planet Earth background. Um, but here's where we get into the interesting stuff. So how did I do that fireplace, for example? Here is the boring, basic WSL with a bare scratch uh, background. Uh, that's this one here. I don't think I showed it, so let's show it. What the heck? Um, Ubuntu 1604, that's what it looks like. Um, so in the settings file, uh, all you do to start that is wsl.exe and then uh, Ubuntu 16.04 is the parameter you use. Now down here, all I had to do was I cut and pasted that format and I used a um, 
a separate command, exactly the same. I just added this AA Fire. So if you do app get install AA Fire, you will get this little fire thing that you can use. But then I wanted to customize the color. So a color scheme, I use the fireplace color scheme, which is one I copied from down here. So there is a fireplace, solarized light. There it is, uh, solarized dark. Da -da. One half light. One of these is going to be the one I use. Um, bear with me a moment here. Do, do, do. Fireplace, there it is. I skipped right over it. Uh, so basically, I copied the solarized dark file that was right here, and I changed. Uh, I changed the bright white setting to be more of a yellow, and I changed the foreground to be more of an orange. And that's how you actually get the uh, fireplace uh, look that you've got here. I can change that to, um, uh, let's see, let's change the color theme real quick. Change the color theme to, um, there's one thing that would be great is if the uh, things were up there a little bit better. Campbell. If I save this, you'll see the fire is now just black and white because that's just one of the standard themes that come with it. But if I change it back to fireplace, and we're back to fireplace. So uh, you get the idea here. There's all kinds of customization you could do with these, uh, and all kinds of things you can do as well with uh, TMOX and other things that are part of each one of those consoles uh, when you work with them. All right. So last but not least, I do want to talk to you a little bit about how you connect. Um, oh, first of all, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the Azure CLI. So I showed you the Azure CLI. What is it? It's a way to actually manipulate cloud services and objects on the cloud um, using the command line. You can create shell scripts. It's bash compatible. It has common Linux tools and commands. Uh, it has piping and output just the way you'd expect SSH. It runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux because it's written in Python, and it's on GitHub, and PRs are accepted. So please do check that out. Uh, if you're running on a local machine, you have to install it on DOS or um, WSL or any other platform. But if you use the Cloud Shell, it's built in. Okay. Uh, last but not least, as I mentioned before, VS Code Remote. I do want to show you a little bit about that. So this is a way of manipulating things in the cloud using the command line. So let's get in there. What I'm going to do, I'm already in my Visual Studio code. That's what I've been showing the JSON file with. If I go here, and there's a several options. There's a little extension that I've installed, which is the uh, uh, Azure Remote Server. So there's three different things, Remote WSL, Remote SSH, and Remote Containers. So I'm going to focus on Remote SSH and Containers today, uh, actually just on SSH. Uh, in SSH, what I can do is I can set up a host file and I just connect to it. I can actually go out and connect to my VM. So I'm in Visual, um, Visual Studio over here. Okay. And if I go here in Visual Studio, I can actually set up different command lines from here. So I hit control on backtick to do that. But I have PowerShell, bash, or git bash, or command prompt. Right now I'm just defaulting the command prompt. But I could set up bash if I wanted to. And the next time I open this, it opens in bash. So then if I'm running a script up here uh, that needs bash, I can actually just use that like that. All right, uh, the other thing I can do, control shift P in Visual Studio Code, I can open bash in Cloud Shell. So if I hit control back tick now, it actually requests that cloud shell. So I'm not actually in this part of the screen. I'm not on my server anymore, on my desktop anymore. I'm actually out on the cloud in a container ready to run things on Azure. This is extremely handy if you have bandwidth issues or something like that. I can do a git clone over to my cloud shell and then I can start playing around with things here. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go to the other instance. When it connects to a VM, it actually opens a new version of Visual Studio Code. And this one actually has a server on the cloud. So now I can open a folder. I'm opening a folder in my virtual machine. 
So if I go here, for example, oh, here we go. Here's a YAML file. So what's the advantage of doing this? Of course, you can do just SSH in. You can dial in. But look at this. I can actually edit things in this file right now. So I could just get rid of this white space here, for example. Save this just like I would in Visual Studio Code. But this has actually been edited and saved just now on my virtual machine in the cloud. If you look here, I can actually run commands. If I run these commands, these ex execute on the virtual machine, not on my local machine. And I have many different things. So you remember before when I hit select default shell, I had bash, I had DOS, uh, command prompt, and uh, PowerShell. Look at this. Now I have shell, bash, rbash, dash, tmux, or screen. I can use any one of those as part of my uh, access to the cloud. So when I close this now and I hit control back tick just like I did on my local machine. So we're actually in Tmux now uh, as you can see here but we can change that again back to bash if we want to. So all kinds of cool things you can do here. Uh, of course you can still do things like edit and manage things here but you can actually run commands too. If there's a shell script here I can run it. I can edit JavaScript. I don't have to use Vi or Vim or any of those uh, other things that you have to remember how to get out of. Uh, this one's pretty easy to get out of. You just close the file and I can close the directory and it actually shuts down the connection for me as well. And that's it. All right. So uh, I covered a little bit about Command prompt in the console, PowerShell, WSL, everything locally, how you can do Cloud Shell in the cloud, also um, terminal and all the different ways you can customize that. Uh, just to get involved, definitely go out and uh, install and run Windows Terminal, kick the tires, uh, definitely uh, file bugs and share feedback. We have all kinds of facilities there. Uh, not just terminal, by the way. Let's go out to a browser here. Just a few tips. So WSL is open source. It's on GitHub. They take pull requests as well. MS-DOS. People don't know this. I like to ask this question. Do you think we should open source MS-DOS? And I always get positive results and I go, we did a while ago. Uh, you can check it out. All right. Uh, and then uh, the terminal, of course, is open source. All of these things have issues that you can uh, access and uh, share. And if you have any issues with it, we love your feedback. Uh, remind, uh, just a reminder that Terminal is in preview right now. So uh, there are a lot of uh, discussions and things that might change, but it's definitely something that's fun and to, uh, cool to play around with right now. And here's the Azure CLI. I mentioned it's on Python uh, and it's on GitHub. Uh, you can actually um, uh, provide PRs. We take pull, pull requests for any one of these open source projects. And that is that. So not just Terminal, but all the other. Uh, you can uh, clone these repos. You can play around with them. You can customize them. You can extend them. I mentioned before uh, settings JSON. That's definitely something you should uh, have a look at as well. So um, this is recorded, so uh, you know when we're actually at an event, you'll have um, uh, resources available. Uh, also, you'll have upcoming sessions. We don't have anything listed right now because it changes with each location. And thanks for coming. I uh, really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, um, my uh, my alias at Microsoft is bbenz, so bbenz at microsoft.com. Also, ACA MS Apps 11 repo is the place where you can find all the resources that I showed today, including this video and the slides. So thanks for coming.